Hi, is this Ketch's Landing? Yeah, that's right. My name's George Stobart. You're a surveyor, right, Mr. Bronson? And of course I'm a surveyor. Why the hell else will I have a theodolite? Well, I don't know. Hobby, maybe? Yeah, right. What brings you here, anyway? I'm searching for an ancient Mayan artifact. What is it? Some kind of jewel? No, it's obsidian. A black stone with supposedly mystic powers. You're nuts. This is similar to the stone I'm looking for. What makes you think you'll find it here? Because when the stones were stolen in the 17th century... Hold it! The stones have been lost for 300 years? Approximately. And you're hoping to find them again? You're nuts. And why here? A wise old Indian shaman told me he saw the stones in a vision. Ha ha. That's rich. Listen, I got work to do, okay? Look at this. An article about a total eclipse of the sun. Oh, yeah? Listen, I don't want to be rude, uh, but it just comes naturally. I really don't care. Catch you later, Bronson. I just had to sneak a look at those plans. Hey, get out of there. You know, wherever I go, I hear those words. Paris, Syria, Ireland, or Spain. Makes no difference. What do you think you're doing? I was trying to show some interest in your project. It looked like a set of plans. I didn't want a fishing net. I couldn't reach it. The ladder extended easily. I couldn't reach it. It was a flagpole, one of a pair. You there? What are you doing? Pardon me, ladies. I was just going to climb your ladder. I'm helping Bronson. Oh, you're not like him, are you? He's very polite, isn't he, Frost? And he has dimples when he smiles. The ladder reached all the way up to the flagpole. Get down! Sorry. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Good afternoon, Mr. Stobart. Would you care for tea? No, thank you, ma'am. I don't like tea. Is that your cat? Yes, it is. It's Ruddles. Do you like cats, Mr. Stobart? I love them. They're so cute with their claws and their little puckered butts. Aren't they, though? Don't encourage him, Mina. Can you tell me anything about Captain Ketch? More than you can tell me about your great-great-great-great-grandfather, no doubt. You're his descendant? Certainly. Captain Ketch was born in Dorset, England, in the reign of King Henry VIII. His family were undistinguished farmers, but young Frederick Ketch decided to go to sea. We have plenty of seamen in our family, Mr. Stobart. Are you interested in history, Mr. Strobot? Yes, I am. You were telling me about Captain Ketch. Do go on. Oh, yes. He sailed under Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? John Hawkins. 
one of the great traders of the Elizabethan age. In 1568, Frederick Ketch was a young man serving aboard the Jesus, Hawkins flagship. They sailed from England to Africa and across the wide Atlantic to these islands. Ketch was never to see the shores of England again. How come Ketch never made it home? Because the Spaniards sank the Jesus in an act of treachery. You said Hawkins' fleet traded between Africa and the Indies. What was it they were trading? Black men with no shirts. You have to understand, Mr. Stobart, that this was the 16th century. But that doesn't alter the fact that Hawkins and Ketch were slavers and pirates. Would it surprise you to learn that Hawkins was also a devoutly religious man? He transported slaves in a ship named after Jesus Christ. In my book, that makes him a hypocrite. What happened to Ketch? Was he killed? Oh, no. He got away and returned to this island, to this very house. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It's a museum? That could be just what I'm looking for. Is it true Frederick Ketch was a pirate? Frederick Ketch was emphatically not a pirate. They hanged him, you know, down there on the beach in front of his family. Didn't bother with the trial, just whipped him out from his breakfast table and hoisted him up in chains. Well, if he wasn't a pirate, what did they hang him for? Envy. Pure, green-eyed envy. He had been a successful privateer, you see, and had accumulated great wealth. As rich as a mink in a paddock. Shut up, Mina. Yes, Frost. The small-minded governor and his lackeys wanted his money, trumped up some ridiculous charge about breaking the conditions of his letter of mark, and hanged him like a common thief. The blackguards! Letter of Mark? The document that permitted him to engage and destroy the enemies of the crown. The difference between a lawful privateer and a pirate. Yoo-hoo! Sorry, Frost. Well, why didn't Ketch just say, take a hike, guys, I've got a pirating license? Frederick Ketch was not a pirate! But he did show them his letter of Mark. But they destroyed it and hanged him anyway. It was locked. The house is closed. How come? It is undergoing refurbishment. Refurbishment? Where are the workmen? Preparation is half the work, young man. The intention is to prepare the museum for the new century. The Frederick Ketch Memorial Museum. It would look nice in neon. A museum for a pirate? There was a stony silence. I have already told you, sir, he was not a pirate. It's precisely this sort of vile misrepresentation that Mr. Bronson is seeking to rebalance. Oh? How? Mr. Bronson has kindly agreed to undertake the museum's refurbishment at a very reasonable price. He understands the importance of a sense of history. Funny. That's not the impression I got of Bronson at all. He also understands spherical geometry. Mina. Well, he does. Listen, ma'am, I came a long way to visit this place. If we make an exception in your case, everyone will want to get in. Pardon me, but I didn't exactly have to fight my way through the crowds. You're the second visitor we've had today. No, I'm sorry, but it's impossible. The window was locked. You want to buy some fish? Nah, I don't like fish. What's your name? Rio. It means river. What about you? George. It means, uh, well, it, it's just a name. How come the old ladies closed the museum? It's Bronson's doing. He have the plans for redeveloping the museum. They kind of regret it, you know. The man's a crook. Will you help me get those plans? I don't want to go nowhere near that man. He promised to draw me when he found the fish I left in his sleeping bag. What do you know about Captain Ketch? 
just what everybody knows around here. He was a pirate and get himself hung. No school today? No, sir. What about your education? I can fish, sail, and swim. I've been looking after myself since I was six, and I'm bilingual. Aren't you a little overqualified for a beach bum? Well, you know, there's a lot of competition. Do you know anything about pirate treasure? Man, that's all stories. There's no such thing as a real pirate treasure. Do you know anything about a forthcoming eclipse? No, but that explains why the weather's about to get real bad. Rio, it's a beautiful day. There's no more than a whisker of cloud in the sky. Trust me, man, it's going to get real bad. It was Rio. What you got there? I didn't think the kid would be interested in that. You're really fond of that cat, aren't you? He is our companion and our solace. I thought about catnapping the little monster until they let me in, but it wasn't my style. Maybe there was some other way I could use their affection for the cat to get me into the house. I've been talking to Rio, the little fisher boy. I'll thank you not to mention that little wretch in my presence. Dirty little whelk. Nasty fishy boy. That will do, Mina. I gather you don't have much time for the little boy. That child is a delinquent, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, well, he's only, what, 11, maybe? A knave with one hand on the tops. What is it about Rio that you don't like, Miss Frost? Well, once upon a time, he and Emily... Be quiet this instant, Mina! What can you tell me about Emily? Emily? What business can she be of yours? Her parents were killed in a typhoon. We, as her only living relatives, took it upon ourselves to raise the child. That's good to know Charity isn't dead. Oh, but she is. Washed overboard in the typhoon. Mr. Strobart wasn't talking about Emily's mother. He was being sarcastic. What else can you tell me about Emily? How dare you pry into our family in this way? I refuse to answer any more of your impertinent questions. Okay, it was time for diversionary tactics. I thought I saw a little girl down on the beach. You must be mistaken. He must be mistaken. Mustn't he, Frost? I'm sure I'm not. A little girl and that young fisher boy. What? It's not possible. Uh, what were they doing? Other well, kinds of things that all little boys and girls get up to at their age? When I was a little girl, we used to play cows and milkmaids. Well, betide you if you're lying to us, Mr. Stobart. Heaven help you. With a creak of ancient corsetry, the sisters sailed majestically over the distant horizon. I didn't have a flag on me, so the flagpole would have to stay bare. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. It was a flagpole, one of a pair. Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. Nah, I didn't...
Tell me about the two old ladies. Who? The Catch sisters. One of them's crazy as a coot, and the other will turn you to stone if you're not careful. Say, was that kid giving you trouble? The Fisher boy? No, he was very polite. Ha! He's a juvenile delinquent. I suppose he told you I was a crook. Oh no, he's a good kid. He'd never say anything like that. Sure he would, the little punk. Did you see the sisters go by? Yeah, they wanted to string that Fisher brat up. Of course, uh, I told them where to find him. A fink, as well as a creep. Nice. But he'd managed to vanish somehow. What are you doing with the theodolite? Surveying the old house. I got great plans for this place. Oh yeah? You bet. Take a look around. What do you see? Paradise. I see opportunity. This place is ripe for development. I like it just the way it is. And that's where we differ. You see, Mr. Stobart, I'm what you might call a man of vision. I see a great future for Ketch's Landing, and it all starts here, with that house. Can I take a look at your plans? No way. What interest would they be to you, anyhow? I've always had a secret desire to be a surveyor. You have? Sure. I mean, you surveyors are just like the great explorers, aren't you? Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama, Chris Columbus. Maybe you don't sail uncharted seas or discover new continents, but you're okay in my book. Horseshit. You just stay away from those plans, you hear? How do you survey a house like that? I put a target reflector on the end of one of the flagpoles up there on the house. I sight on it from various locations through the theodolite, record the angles along the baseline, and triangulate them to give me the exact position of the target. Understand? Why the end of the flagpole? Wouldn't it have been better on a corner of a wall or something? Are you a surveyor? Uh, no, my degree's in law. Then shut up. Catch you later, Bronson. Did you see the weird sisters come by here? Did I? They look madder than usual, so I hide until they gone by. Just as well. They thought you were playing with Emily. Boy, were they steamed. Emily? You're madder than them. Tell me about your friend Emily. Why are you so interested in Emily Ketch? Emily Ketch? A descendant of Captain Ketch, the pirate? Yeah. Well, it doesn't bother you? Why should it? We don't responsible for our ancestors. Can you let me have a fish, kid? I thought you said you don't like fish. It's not for me. It's a present. For the old ladies? Well, it makes a change from flowers and candy. No, it's for their cat. Okay. What do I get out of it? I can pay you. I've got Quaramontian dollars, French francs, and traveler's checks. You must be joking. The nearest bank is three islands away. Is this worm worth a fish? Could be good beat. How did it die? I think it drowned in tequila. Just like my Uncle Gabriel. Yeah, I'll have that. Okay, I'll get you a fish. It might take a while, though. No luck with the fish? No, man. They don't want bite. That's cause they know there's a storm brewing. Storm? Well, I don't think so. Hey! I got a bite! You have? It's a big one! A real big one! Reel him in, Rio. Jeez. It must be a whale or something. Rustiest whale I ever see. I still need a fish, Rio. Okay, make me try again. Maybe you better change your bait. The only serviceable part of the bicycle's wreck was a rubber inner tube. You just never know when you're going to need stuff like that. There's a fish, my man. I can't put it in my pocket while it's flapping about like that. No problem.
okay, cat. You don't deserve this, but here's a little fish. The little monster ate the fish, but never strayed far from the ball. I wasn't going to risk further laceration by the cat's claws. No, that's wrong. That was... N that wouldn't work. Nope. I'd better think... Nah, I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. There's a fish, my man. That isn't it at all. That wouldn't work. I'd have to do that from the ground. That should get the old cat dancing. I just hoped it didn't give itself a cardiac. I didn't have the throwing strength to knock the marker off. I didn't want to risk the wrath of that vicious animal by putting my hand within striking distance of those claws.
I didn't have a flag on me, so the flagpole would have to stay bare. I didn't want to risk the wrath of that vicious animal by putting my hand within striking distance of those claws. I couldn't reach the flagpole, and a bush stopped me from moving the ladder across. didn't have the throwing I put the ball in the catapult Took aim. Yes! Okay, so it was, but I'd knocked the theodolite target clean off the end of the flagpole. going on here hi Bronson nice to see you too you again have you been screwing around with my theodolite target where is it I had to climb out of the window to put that one on damn it I'm gonna have to go through all that again not this time the house is locked up and the sisters aren't here hell's teeth I'll have to put the spare target on the other flagpole a whole morning's work wasted I'm gonna fix all this and then I'm gonna fix you you hear yeah fine I'll be waiting. Oh! What you doing? I'm gonna kill you for this, Stobart! Get me down from here! What, so you can kill me? Gee, you talked me out of it, Bronson. I felt a little guilty about leaving Bronson up there, but not much, obviously. The marker was a bright, shiny thing, and I have a weakness for bright, shiny things. It wasn't going to be much use without the theodolite, though. Bronson out of the way, I could finally get a clear look at the plans. Engineers' drawings didn't mean much to me, but one thing was clear. These plans were for a five-story, 200-roomed, luxury, pirate-themed hotel. Another stain on the bedspread of paradise. Why is Mr. Bronson hanging from that flagpole? 
And he climbed up there of his own accord. Then help him, you stupid man. Quickly, before he falls. Hi. Could I ask... Never mind that. Help poor Mr. Bronson. Here. Bronson's plans. This means nothing to me. She's not wearing her reading glasses. Ah, wait. Yes, I see now. I see it all too clearly. That man is planning to build a huge hotel. Bronson is a confidence trickster. Me now, we have been duped. I'm glad we didn't sign his contract. Oh, I hate tricksters, especially confident ones. Come, Mina. Mr. Bronson, you may consider yourself persona non grata. Yes. Carve canum. Kindly disentangle yourself from our flagpole and eject yourself from our property this very minute. Disentangle. Eject! Hey, cut that out, you crazy old bat! How dare you! Mina isn't crazy, she's just engagingly eccentric. Yeah, as a bedbug. Ouch! Lovely as this little vista is, I'd be really grateful if you could let me into the museum now. Certainly, young man. We are most grateful to you for exposing this scoundrel, Mina, the lock. Thanks, ladies. Stobart, be a pal. Get these harpies off me. Ooh. While George was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to the it was a long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar Stone at the British Museum. Yeah.